Welcome to this webinar on Moodle plugins. Glad to have everyone join us. What we want to do is talk about plugins that eClass for Learning has found to be very useful and helpful for increasing student engagement, making it easier for teachers to design their courses, and so on. eClass for Learning is a full service Moodle solutions provider. We provide hosting, theme customization services, development, customizations, report building, training, onboarding support, course development, e-commerce setup. And I would say also at this point that we are a certified Totora partner and we do WordPress hosting and development. And very often we will set up uh, on the e-commerce side, a WordPress site and make that be the e-commerce site and then link that to Moodle courses that you might have. My name is Floyd Sainer and I am a solutions manager with eClass for Learning. Uh, you see my email address there and a phone number where you can reach me. <clears throat> if you have questions, there will be a little questions tab that you can expand and then you can post questions in there and I will try and answer that as we go along. I wanted to talk a little bit first about plugins. They are third-party add-ons for Moodle. They extend the core Moodle capabilities. So Moodle has a lot of activities and resources, blocks and so on, but then developers often build additional capabilities that can be added to Moodle. They are located in the Moodle's plugins database and the link is given there on the screen. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plugins. Some are old and out of date. Some are very specialized. Some are not used very much, but others are used quite a bit. And so the criteria that eClass for Learning uses when we recommend plugins is first that the plugin is from the Moodle plugins database. That is vetted for compatibility and functionality. And when you go and search through that database, it will tell you which versions of Moodle the plugin <clears throat> has been certified for. Uh, you might be able to search the web and find something else that someone has posted on GitHub or somewhere else, but we always stick to the Moodle plugins database. Second thing we look for is that the plugin has been downloaded by a large number of users. And the reason for doing that is that if it's used by a lot of uh, Moodle installations, then there is pressure on the developer to keep it up to date. If only a few people are using it, then they might not keep it up to date. And the third is that the plugin has a record of being updated frequently and remaining in sync with the Moodle version releases. So as Moodle puts out a new major version every six months, the plugins have to be updated for those versions of Moodle and some plugin developers let their versions lag behind. Now that's okay, let's say you're running Moodle 2.9, current version is 3.1, 3.2. Um, if you're running 2.9, that's okay. But when you go to upgrade, then if you upgrade to let's say Moodle 3.1 or 3.2, and that plugin hasn't been updated, it's very likely going to break and not work. And so we feel it's very important to give you access to plugins that are updated frequently. One that we really like is a progress bar. <clears throat> and this is a little block that goes up in the corner on one of the sides of the page. And the instructor can go through and say, these activities should be listed in the progress bar. Anything that's been completed in that list will show up as green. And you can put in due dates when you're expected to be done. And so you see this little now symbol. Anything to the left of that should have been completed before now. Anything to the right is expected to be completed after now. If a little activity is red, that means it has not been completed. So this is very, very helpful. And I have found this a great tool to keep students engaged in the course and it gives them a visual view of how well they are doing. 
Another is the checklist. The checklist is something I usually put into a module or a, a week. And what you can do is list all of the activities that you expect to be completed. Students can also add their own items if you configure it that way. And so they might say, oh, I need to complete something. I need to go back and read this. They can add it in this little checklist and then check it off when it is finished. And there's a little graphic, a little bar that shows then how close they are to being complete. I find this very effective, not only for 12 or college students, but even adult, older adult learners. And if I have been a couple of times when I haven't set it up correctly and students will call me and say, I did this, but it's not showing complete on my checklist. What's wrong? What's wrong? And so it gives me a sense that people really, really want to uh, follow this and that they do use it. Uh, another, again, that is really, really neat is called Level Up. There's a bit of a learning curve to configure this. But after you have it configured, it's really uh, informative for students. So there are two basic ways to set this up. One is the developer of the plugin has a number of engagement tasks and activities that are automatically given a certain number of points. And so uh, what you do is you install this. It shows up as a block on the side of the page. And here in this one level up, you can see 66 points out of 343 points have been achieved. And as the student uh, gets more and more points by engaging with the course, then their, their level, or the little star there, uh, increases in numbers. So I find it more helpful to, number one, put my own image in there, which you can do. You can put a, a different type of image for each level. And then instead of using the activities and tasks that the plugin developer has used, you can put in your own mission or task requirements. So you could go into the course and say, if a student has done these three items, they get 25 points. And if they do these additional four items, they get 50 points. And then you can say, if they reach 100 points, they get up to another level. And that way, a student can quickly come in, they can see which level they are at, but it's also an incentive to say, oh, I want to do more, I want to do more, and I want to increase my level. Now, if you want to, you can also set up a little leaderboard that is shown down below that. It's called a ladder, and it will list the top four or five students, whatever you select, and show their progress. And that's something that if you want to you know, encourage some competition, of course you can, but others may not want to be publishing that. So you don't have to show that. Another one is certificates. Okay, there's a question here. If I change the date on an assignment date, will the progress bar be? Yes, um, I'm quite certain that if you do change the due date on an assignment, the progress bar updates automatically. Another uh, plugin that we really like is the Certificate of Achievement. And this is a plugin where you can award a certificate to someone who has completed a course or even just completed a section. The certificate then is a PDF file which can be downloaded by the student or you can have it automatically emailed to the student. There are some basic configurations along with the plugin, but we also do a lot of custom development of certificates where we can put in any text, any images that you want on the certificate, any border, uh, any language. So this is something that's really, really nice as an addition to Moodle. And it's a little bit, it's different from the electronic badges, which are part of Moodle. An electronic badge is something that you could put on a website or display somewhere showing, certifying your achievement. But this is something you could put up on a wall and frame and so on. And we have a lot of clients who use that. Another plugin that's really nice, especially if you want to put a lot of pages on your page, is the Lightbox plugin. And the Lightbox gallery allows you to load up a whole set of images and then the students can page through the images one by one. Course contents is another block that I like uh, even better than the 
navigation block and the contents block that's built into Moodle. And the reason is it just lists the title of each module or week. And it automatically updates. If you hide something, it doesn't appear in a table of contents. If you open something up, then it appears in a table of contents. And so these will be the, the titles, as I mentioned, for each section. The grid format is a very interesting plugin to change the way a Moodle course appears to students. So the grid then hides all of the topics and it creates this page where you have images that you can define whatever you want it to be in these images. And then when you click on one of those images, it will take you to that topic, week, or module, and it will just show that one module. Uh, a lot of teachers like to do this, and it reduces the amount of scrolling that you have to do in a course, and it allows students just to go in and be focused on one week or one topic. One of the themes that we really like at eClass for Learning is the essential theme. This is probably the most flexible theme available for Moodle. The developer keeps it up to date and is actually now doing Moodle 3.2 and a prototype for Moodle 3.3. So he's even ahead of what has actually been re released by Moodle. The reason we like it is there are many, many options and settings that you can do directly from the administration panel. Other themes that are limited in what you can do from the administration panel require you to go and write a lot of uh, custom CSS or HTML code. In Essential, there are all of these settings for backgrounds and colors and logos and sliders that you can do just from the administration panel. So this is one that we highly recommend and install for a number of our clients. Atto Text Editor is actually now the default editor for Moodle. And it was designed with usability in mind. And there are many, many features on it, but there are many features that were not included in the Atto Editor. So it doesn't, Atto doesn't have to be installed as a plugin. It's already there, but uh, there are many additional features that can be added in the plugin, such as a word count, math or science characters, additional font colors and families, pasting Microsoft Word that will clean up the Microsoft Word uh, document and so on. This is one that we think is very, very important in especially adding these additional features. Generico filter is a way to write your own filters for content on a page. So up here you see number one, the filter screen, and you have Jericho type equals YouTube comma, and then the ID. What that does is then turn that thing, that one ID into a frame width and height, a border, allow full screen, and so on. And then you get the, the picture at the bottom, the YouTube picture. And you might say, well, I can just paste into YouTube automatically does that. Well, yes, but what you can do with the Generico filter is create a common width, height, um, whatever you want to, and it will automatically be added to just the ID that you put in. So as you begin to post videos or content or whatever, it will automatically format them according to the Generico type uh, filter. This one, again, has a little bit of a learning curve, but after you start using it and get used to it, it is a very, very uh, helpful plugin. Collapse Topics is another course format, and it allows you to show all of the topics in a course collapsed to just one line. So here you will see lessons, is just one line. Homework is one line, but this one has been expanded. You know it's expanded because this little icon is pointing up instead of pointing down. So students can go in and open up just one section or close one section. And so we often include, well, we do include this in all of our installations. 
and it is something that you can apply to a course. Also, maybe best to mention here that when you have these different course formats, such as CLAPS Topics or the Grid Format, or one that I will show you as a tabbed format, these are just skins that you're putting over your course. And so you can go in and try them just by clicking Use This Format. And it does not change the content of your course. You can always go back and switch to a prior one or switch to one of the standard ones. A journal is another plugin that gives each student a place to write and reflect. Just as you would think of a, a journal that a written journal, a paper journal that you might have for a course. It is set up so that each student has a private area and the instructor is able to go in and comment on the journal entries and this can be graded. One topic format. Now this is a little bit interesting here. The, these screenshots that I've pulled are from the Moodle plugins database. And you'll see this one is in Spanish. What it shows you is that Moodle really is a global course management system, and there are developers from all around the world. Uh, because this is in Spanish does not mean that when you use it, it will be in Spanish. It will pick up whatever language uh, you are using in your course. But the important thing to see here is right up here, these are tabs, Presentacion, Unidad 1, Unidad 2, so on. And what happens as a student clicks on one of these tabs, the topic associated with that tab appears at the bottom. And so again, it's a little bit like the grid format where you could click on a grid and have one topic open up. But here you just have tabs at the top of your course, and as a student clicks on a tab, then you see the content for that module or that topic. Are there any questions up to this point? I'll just pause here a little bit uh, before I continue. Uh, what version do I have to have in order to download the grid format plugin? As far as I know, that grid format plugin has been around for a long time. It's, it's current up to Moodle 3.2, but it probably goes back to like Moodle 2.6, 2.7, 2.8. That should be available. Uh, there should be no problem with that. If there are no other questions, we will continue here. GradeMe is another plugin that is just for teachers. This is a great one if you have a course with a lot of items that you have to grade manually. And when you put this in, um, the teacher will be able to go in and see all of the items that remain to be graded. I don't know that there's much more to say about this. It just updates automatically and keeps track of everything. And this is a good thing to put um, out on your main page when you log in on your dashboard and so you can see what you have to grade. Attendance is a good plug-in if you have a course in which you need to take attendance. It gives you a list of students in a grid with days or weeks. You can set it up any way that you want to and then you can go in and quickly take attendance in a course. Sharing cart is good for course developers. Say you have three or four courses and you want to move something from one course into three other courses. How do you do that easily? Well, you can do some backup, import, and so on. But the sharing cart allows you to go in and select from, let's say, the first course. And you can go in and say, I want to sh share these three items or place these three items in my sharing cart. And then you can go to any other course and open up that sharing cart and say, I want to share. And you would do that. Uh, you would share by clicking this little item here. And it would just automatically move that from the first course over to the course that you're working in. And so this uh, makes it a lot easier to move content around without having to go through the backup import process. 
configurable reports is a report writer that can access the Moodle database. Now you need some SQL knowledge to do custom reports, but configurable reports also has a lot of uh, pre-populated scripts where you can go in and just get a report from the database. This is a very crucial plugin, especially if you find Moodle is limited in reporting. Uh, information that you need to know, or if you want to customize some reports. Course size is a plugin that goes through your all of your courses on your site and gives you an approximate size in the number of bytes used on a disk. This is helpful if you're starting to run out of memory or you want to see, you know, where are some problems. Uh, due to memory usage, and you can begin to say, oh my gosh, this course is really, really huge. Perhaps my instructor is uploading very large videos to the course or very large documents to the course, and you can go in and address, address some of those issues. Little email test, again, is more for system administrators, but one that we use a lot. It allows you to send a test email, and it gives back a report on whether or not that was successful. So this first box up here is a message that you would get if you sent an email message and it was successfully delivered to your mail server. The neat thing about it is if the email fails, it gives you a detailed report uh, telling you why it failed. And if you need to do debugging of email in your system. This is an excellent, excellent plugin to have. Student folder is a place where students can upload files or documents. And then you as the instructor can make those available to all students. So let's say you have you know, maybe a team uh, several groups or teams working on something. You say I want team A to upload the results of their work. I want team B to upload the results of their work and team C their work. And then you can make that available to the entire class. That's it on what I have to present right now. And I'm going to watch for questions. Okay, so there is one here. In the sharing cart, is it duplicating the asset or referring back to the original course. It duplicates the asset. It is not referring back to the original course. So it would sort of be the same as going, and let's say you have a resource or an activity and you click edit, duplicate. That makes a copy of it without any student information, makes a copy of it and then moving that copy somewhere else. Please contact us if you have any questions and Tammy Frame, our CEO, will be contacting you with a follow-up email to see if you have any questions and also make this available as a video. Thank you for attending and uh, we'll see you later.